So your game is finally starting to come to life, but it's kind of quiet. Not a problem. So let's go ahead and put a sphere on the field over here and create an audio source. From here you can pick whatever sound you want and drag it into the clip. And notice how the only checkbox here says play on awake. And what that means is that if you run the game now, you will hear the sound coming out of the sphere. But one thing that you will notice is that the sound stops. And that is because if you want a sound to repeat over and over forever, you'll need to check loop. If you run the game now, the sound will never stop. You can mute the sound with this checkbox. If you have effects, filters, or reverb zones, you can selectively bypass them with these. But at a beginner level, all you really need to know is volume, pitch, spatial blend, Doppler, roll off, and distance. If that's all you know, you'll be all right. So let's start with the volume. Super straightforward, the more volume, the louder the sound. Pitch is really a frequency thing, but all you need to know is that the higher it is, the more sped up it's gonna sound. But the lower the pitch, the slower and deeper it'll sound instead. This is hella useful. I'll explain why in a minute. But before I go further, let's just set roll off to linear. It's just a lot easier to understand. And all it means is that the volume of the sound is one to one proportional to your distance from it. Spatial blend determines how the sound is affected by your distance. So if your roll off is linear and you set spatial blend to one and run the game, you'll see that when we are at a range, we can't hear the sound. And as we get closer, the sound gets louder. You'll also notice that the pitch changes depending on how fast you are approaching the sound. If you like this effect, you can amplify it by increasing the Doppler. This replicates how the pitch for a sound gets higher as it approaches you and lower as it leaves you. Kinda like a car driving by. If you turn off the Doppler, the pitch won't change at all regardless of whether you approach or leave the sound. Max distance is just how far you have to be before you can start to hear the sound. Min distance though, is how close you need to be in order to hear the loudest part of the sound. And that's really all you need to get started. But what about coding? How do you control this stuff in code? Well, let's assume that we wanted to give our death some noise. So every time we run into a wall, we want to hear something. Now, the first time I tried this, I made the mistake of adding that sound to my game object. But here's why you don't want the explosion sound to be attached to your main character. Watch what happens as soon as I hit a wall. See that? Everything goes quiet as soon as I die. And that is because the thing that was making the noise is no longer around. So the easiest way that I've found is to attach the sound to the explosion instead. So let's get our explosion prefab. And I would normally put the sound on the actual object, but in order to teach you guys some useful code instead, we're gonna create an empty child object of the prefab, add an audio source, turn spatial blend to one, roll off to linear, max distance to 100, and keep on away checked. So it makes a noise as soon as it appears. Pick whatever sound you want, and drag it into the clip. All right, now let's create a new C-sharp script to control the details. First, let's create a variable for our audio source. I'm just gonna call it my sound. Then in the inspector, drag your audio source into your variable. Now let's say that we wanted our sound object to destroy itself as soon as it's finished playing the whole sound. To do that, I would make a float called life, and I would set life equal to the length of the sound clip. In the start method, I would unparent it from the explosion prefab. Then in the update, I would subtract life by delta time, and then once life equals zero, destroy itself. And if you say and run the game now, it unparents itself, it makes its noise, and the object will destroy itself as soon as the sound is over. But we can make it better. What if we wanted the sound to have a random pitch so that it's not exactly the same each time you hear it? Well, that's easy. If you go to the start method and type mysound.pitch equals random range 0.5 and 1.5, then each time the sound plays, it will randomly set the pitch somewhere between 0.5 and 1.5.
and really that's basically how you control everything. If you wanted to program the volume, you would type mysound.volume. If you wanted to control the loopin or mutin, you would say mysound.mute or mysound.loop. Once you've created a variable for the audio source, you can basically control anything on it. Anyway, I know that was a little long, but I really hope that was useful. And as always, hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you around.